before we can factor perfect cubes, we got to know what perfect cubes are. The most challenging thing probably of this lesson is recognizing a number and a variable that is a perfect cube and then being able to find the cube root of it. If you can do that, then you'll be able to do this lesson. All right? Here are the most common perfect cubes that you're going to see in these problems. Now, a cubed number means that there was a factor that was multiplied by itself three times. So we need to be able to recognize that these numbers are perfect cubes and then figure out what was the factor that we said this times itself times itself gives me one. One. Anybody see what I did with my marker thingy? If I steal it? Is that it by the eraser? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Go away. So the cube root of 1 is 1. 8. What number multiplied by itself 3 times gives you 8? 2. The cube root of 8 is 2. What's the cube root of 27? 64. 125. 1,000. Good. All right? Now, it's not to say you're not going to see 6 cubed, 7 cubed, 8 cubed, 9 cubed, whatever. But these are the most common ones that you're going to see. So we need to make sure that we recognize them. Also, when we're dealing with variables, remember, the exponent is not a whole number. It's an exponent, and the way we found it was by adding exponents together to give us x cubed. So as long as the exponent can be divided by 3, then it is a perfect cube. And how do you find the cube root? You divide the exponent by 3. So the cube root of x cubed is x to the first power. Because what's x times x times x? X cubed. X cubed. And the cubed root of x to the sixth power is x squared. Because what's x squared cubed? x to the sixth. So the cubed root of x to the sixth is x squared. What's the cubed root? of x to the 12, x to the 4th, okay? All right, just remember those things. We need to be able to find the cube root of the numbers and of the variables. All right, now, oh, what's the cube root of x to the 69th power? x to the 23rd. Divide 69 by 3. As long as the exponent is divisible by 3, it is a perfect cube. Because we want to be able to multiply the same thing oops, by itself three times. That is x to the 69th. Okay? All right. Now this is what our answer is going to look like when we factor perfect cubes. But before we start, I want you to see if you recognize a pattern. in these things. Look at these four problems and tell me if you see a pattern in what's happening from the first group to the second. In each of these are four separate lines. 
What? The numbers are the same. The like, 5 is, is square 25. Right, square root of 25. Okay, watch this. If I square x, doesn't that give me x squared? Okay, so this number has been squared. How can I put these two numbers together to make 2x? That's so funny. I multiply them together. How can I turn 2 into 4? I square it. Here I squared x. I multiplied the two things together. Then I squared 5. Here I squared x. Then I multiplied 6 times x. Then I squared 6. Squared x. Multiplied 9 times x, squared 9. Do you all see that? Okay. You need to recognize this pattern because when we look at the sum or the difference of perfect cubes, all we need to be able to figure out really is what's the square root of those two numbers. And then follow the pattern to figure out what goes in our trinomial. Blake. Um, on the first one, how do you multiply x times 2? How do you get negative 2x? I'm going to show you oh. in a second. Okay. So, uh, it's, like, it's the square root of uh, 4 is 2. <laughs> like, 2 is the square root of 4 and 5 is the square root of 25. That's the pattern? Yes. Okay. But watch. We're going to take this thing and we're going to put it together. Thank you. All right, let's multiply this out. Can we use foil? Uh, no. no, we can't use foil if it's not two binomials because that middle term, negative 2x, will be missed. Okay, so we've got to distribute x to everything in the parentheses. So we get x cubed minus 2x squared plus 4x. Then we take plus 2 and distribute it to everything in parentheses to get plus 2x squared minus 4x plus 8. Now when I combine my like terms, what happens to this x squared and this x term? They cancel each other out. Plus and minus gives me 0. Plus and minus gives me 0. So all I'm left with is the sum of two cubes because x cubed is a perfect cube and 8 is a perfect cube. Now this is going to be how we're going to start. That's what we're going to start off with. And we're going to be trying to get back to here. All right, now Blake asked, how can this be negative? Because of the process of distribution, in order for these terms, for 1 to be plus and 1 to be minus, these two signs have to be different. One has to be plus and one has to be minus. So if it isn't, then it's like that. The problem's just like that, okay? So in the pattern of saying square this, multiply this together, square this, we're not worrying about the signs. Because when we start at the beginning of a problem here, we're going to list out all the signs that belong in our answer. Because it's always the same pattern, okay? Well, what if they're not the same? It's like drawn or something? It's right, but we're not going to be there. We're going to be here. Okay? Now look. This is your cue to let you know how to start with your signs. All right? Plus sign, plus sign. What is x compared to this x cubed? It's the cubed root of x cubed. What's 2? The cubed root of 8. All right? Let's put this one together. Huh? Hold on. We're going to get there. 